What do you want more than anything in life? What do you want more of? Today's combination inspirational quotes video and personal development training video will discuss the number one key you and I need to live our most fulfilling life of great meaning and personal success and professional success. You know, one of my favorite inspirational quotes comes from the 14th century Frenchman Michel de Montaigne. De Montaigne said, the soul which has no fixed purpose in life is lost. To be everywhere is to be nowhere. Absolutely. The soul which has no fixed purpose is indeed lost. The human soul, your soul and mine, longs for purpose. We long to grow, contribute, live large, and to matter. We long for depth of meaning in relationships and in life. And indeed, as de Montaigne said, to be everywhere is to be nowhere. To live our lives fully and deeply requires us to choose a purpose. Yes, it is a choice. Stick around for the rest of this video and for the next video, which will come out next week, and I'll give you a simple exercise that you can use to find, create, or clarify and energize your purpose. So perhaps you are already deeply synchronized with your purpose. If so, awesome. You'll still benefit from these two videos. So stay with me, please. Okay, today I have a personal story I'm going to share with you to make the point of the importance and the choice in purpose. I began life having any natural self-confidence, self-esteem, direction, or purpose I might have had being totally crushed. Yet I've gone on to create and feel great purpose and meaning in my life, as well as considerable self-confidence and self-esteem. If I can do this, anyone can. And you'll see what I mean after I tell you my story. My story begins when I was 18. <laughs> Remember? It was a late spring of my high school senior year, about a month before graduation, maybe two months. I was a terribly lost soul, recovered from a drug problem, and from years of, uh, years away, I should say, of being recovered from a highly dysfunctional family. It had taken me five years to complete four years of, of, of high school. I stopped skipping school only when they threatened to expel me, and I took tests only when they was necessary to not flunk. I was the proverbial lost soul. I had no direction, and if it were possible, I had even less self-confidence and self-esteem. I'd never had any guidance or support from my highly dysfunctional family. I had an absent father who, when present, was emotionally and physically abusive and violent to the extreme. He was a very successful man, actually, a lawyer, a businessman, and here you go, a politician. Who would have figured, huh? It confused and distressed me as a young boy that so many people seemed to adore this monster. But of course, the person I knew was not the person that the public knew. The two people bore no resemblance to each other. So anyway, back to the story. It was springtime, about a month before high school graduation. It was around 8.30 in the morning. Class would begin soon, but for now there were a hundred, maybe more kids, in small groups, milling around the front of the school, socializing with each other. Isn't that what teenagers do best, and most often, socialize? As we all chatted in our small groups, some sort of list was being passed from group to group. When it made its way to my group, I asked my friend who received it, what the list was, and she said the class rankings. I'd had no idea the school ranked us. I'd never heard that before. So what do you think my next thought was? If you were me, what would you be thinking? Right. I thought, well, where the heck am I on this list? I want to see the list. That, my friends, was a bad choice. Another four years back, at age 14, I was sent away to a drug clinic some 300 miles and two states away from my hometown in Northern Virginia, in the D.C. area. I spent six or more months there. Returning home from the drug clinic, I still lacked what I really needed in life, which was self-esteem, self-confidence, and direction. A sense of personal meaning and life purpose. 
and I still totally lacked a single adult to act as a positive example, a mentor, or any kind of support or guidance. I was a life pedestrian, wandering, aimless, lost, and profoundly confused. I got through high school without studying a single time and with doing the minimal work required to just make D's and barely get through. Singularly, the low point of my first 50 years probably was the story I started when I was 18 years old. It was a beautiful spring morning, sunny, crisp, cool. My friend that I was talking, one of my friends I was talking to that got the class rankings, handed them to me when she was done with them. I should have just handed them right back to her. As I remember it, my class had 326 students. A number is close, if not exact. I looked over the first couple of pages and I saw the usual suspects. I, I knew who would be on those pages, pretty much. As I mentioned, I already had no self-confidence, no self-esteem, zero direction, no goals or anything at that age. So if we had 326 kids in the class, there were probably about eight pages in the ranking list, right? So I hadn't given this much thought. I was under no illusions I would be in the first half of this rankings. Not that I'd even thought about that. But by the time I got to the fifth or sixth page and I hadn't seen my name, it really began to sink in. I hadn't seen my name, and I knew, though, that wherever I am on this list, if I am, it's not going to be pretty or, or, or pleasant. Suddenly, I was terrified to finish the list. I was afraid of where I would find my name, and ironically enough, I was also scared that I might not even find my name on the list because I was of the opinion that I was so irrelevant, such a non-entity, that I thought, maybe I'm not even on this list. Maybe I don't even exist per the school. That would have hurt, but I wouldn't have been surprised. But now, I needed to finish what I'd started, and I wanted to see where I fit in on this list, or where I didn't fit in, maybe would be more accurate. So I reached the final page, and I still hadn't seen my name. My stomach tightened, my breathing became more and more shallow and rapid. My heart was down around the floor somewhere. Only now did it fully dawn upon me that even if I find my name on this list, it's going to be painful. It was a public declaration of what I felt inside, that I was a total loser. The single largest authority in our lives was declaring to everyone that mattered to me that, yes, Babson is a big lo loser, and he's stupid, by the way. Well, I made my, my way down that last page, my heart sinking with each name that I read because each name was not mine until I made the final name, number 326. The dead last ranked kid in my class, the most stupid, the biggest loser, Christopher Babson. Do you remember being in high school? Remember desperately how you wanted to fit in and to be cool? Do you remember how frustratingly often probably you felt uncool or not as cool as you wanted to be and maybe you didn't fit in as much as you wanted to? Well, if you're like most people, you can relate to this. And if you can't relate to this, then good for you. I applaud you. That's awesome. I mean that. You're blessed. And perhaps something of a freak. I think my boys are like that. I think they've always felt that we've built in so much confidence and love and support for them, although they've had their challenges, my older one in particular. Anyway. If that describes you, I, I hope you've used your confidence and certainty and direction, your purpose in life, to continue to grow and to contribute to other people and to society. So even today, 40 years later almost, it's as if, if, if this day, this event in front of my school happened yesterday, I'm standing there staring at my name on that page, a hundred or more kids around me in small groups in my peripheral vision, and I'm frozen staring at this paper. My imagination, each and every other kid has stopped what they're doing. They're all staring at me, laughing at me. They know what I'm looking at. The list has been passed around. And they're all saying to themselves, Babson is such a loser, the most stupid kid in the class. Of course, my ranking had nothing to do with my intelligence and everything to do with my lack of self-esteem and my direction or lack of direction at that point in my life. My total lack of recognizing any kind of purpose, having any confidence. But my teenage mind couldn't conceptualize that. It wasn't mature or experienced enough to know that. To my young mind, the single largest authority in my world, my school, had publicly declared that I was a massive, hopeless, stupid loser.
was devastated, humiliated, like I've never been before or since. How I escaped that moment, I don't remember because my mind went blank. I somehow got the heck out of there. I skipped school that day. I skipped school the next day. I don't know when I went back, but I did go back. And I did graduate. Uh, a month or two later when graduation was, I graduated dead last, 326th. You know, in my 20s, my early 20s, I found direction and purpose in my career as an actor. But the gnawing feeling of being stupid stayed with me. I longed to be intelligent. I longed to be educated. In my naive mind at that age, I equated traditional education with intelligence. So I longed to get a college degree, but was terrified. I knew I was too stupid to do it. But at the age of 29 or 30, I scratched that itch. I left acting and went to a junior college to work towards a four-year bachelor's degree to, to get into a four-year school with the idea of wanting to go to graduate school. I worked very hard, and I struggled a lot at first. But I went to two top 20 schools. I got my, uh, my BA at UCLA and my MBA at Purdue University. After which I became a Fortune 20 vice president in, of all things, corporate finance, banking, and in business development. And I left the corporate world and started my first company, Billing Management Group, which I sold a few years later. You know, it took me 50 years to get to where I am now, to find who I was, who I've always been and meant to be. But I had to go through a lot of learning, a lot of trial, a lot of pain in life. But I know my mission and my purpose, and they are to reach out to others and to help others actualize themselves personally and professionally, leading themselves and leading other peoples to exceptional experiences, behaviors, and results in their lives, personally and professionally. So let's come full circle back to the beginning of the video. You remember the premise of the video was the quote, the soul with no fixed purpose in life is lost. To be everywhere is to be nowhere. I wanted to share part of my personal story as a testament to the pain of being completely lost with no purpose whatsoever and no future. I wanted to share a personal story to act as testimony and proof of the importance of connecting with our soul, our highest purpose, a personal life mission. It's something each of our souls longs for and needs. I know personally the pain of being a lost soul with no meaning, with no purpose, no hope, and no future. And I also know the exhilaration of accessing and living highest purpose, meaning, relevance, and gifts. Wherever you personally are on this continuum of personal mission, purpose, fulfillment, and success, I encourage you to be who you were born to be. Don't be afraid of it. Don't feel that it's too early or too late, that you're too young or too, too old or too smart or not smart enough. Begin now. I'm an extreme example, I think. I'm pretty sure, based on the other people I've met in life. And if I can do it, you can do it. And know that there will be dark days, days when you're convinced you have or you will fail. Remember, we only fail if we fail to begin or fail to continue. And once you have begun, you can only fail if you quit. So getting the results you don't want is not failure unless you use them as an excuse to quit. Accept that there are dark days. There are for all of us. But use these dark days as tools to forge the metal of your determination and your character. Use them to develop your heart and mind and to stimulate the resolve in your soul. It's your life, your one chance. Live your passion, your purpose. Develop, exercise, and share your gifts. Make a difference for yourself and others. Grow personally and contribute each and every day. Grow just a little bit each day, by the way. Don't expect too much from yourself each day. Be a little better, a little wiser, a little deeper, more productive, and a little more giving each day. Don't expect massive change overnight. But if you do this, the accumulated effect over the course of your life and over the next 10, 20, 50, or 100 years is going to be a brilliant life of unimaginable success and contribution. Well, that's it. The next video next week, is going to provide an exercise that'll help you either access, find access, and live your purpose or your mission or uh, greater meaning in your life, or even if you are totally connected and synchronized with yours already, the exercise will still help you 
to clarify, get closer to it, and energize it each and every day. Live, love, and succeed with passion, purpose, and positive personal power, my friends.